It always seems that the hardest working cars never get the recognition they deserve. This is an example of one of them. The 8th gen Honda Civic, the most underrated generation of Civic. The Honda Civic was first introduced in July of 1972. It was first available as either a hatchback or a station wagon. The Civic came out right around the time of the oil crisis of the early 1970s. Honda came in full force with the Civic CVCC that didn't need a cat and also didn't need to run on unleaded fuel. The larger and more powerful second generation Civic came out in 1980 and by this point all Civics used the CVCC system. Also by this point they were available as a hatchback, station wagon, and now a sedan. The third generation Civic came out in 1984 and this was the first Civic to use the D series engine. It was also the first Civic to adopt the SI nameplate. The SI was offered either as a three door hatch or even in liftback form as the CRX SI. The Civic wagon was carried over for this generation and it was also given a part time four wheel drive system and an additional extra low first gear ratio. Honda introduced the all-new standard fuel-injected fourth-generation Civic in 1987. This was also the first Civic to use independent rear suspension. The Civic CRX liftback was also still available. The all-new fifth-generation Civic was introduced in 1992, and sadly, the wagon variant was killed for the US, but still remained in Japan. Honda offered the ultra-fuel-efficient Civic VX, which offered up to 55 mpg. This was also the first generation of the strong tuner culture for the Civic. The sixth generation Civic came out in 1996 and Honda actually tried to adopt new forms of fuel for cars with the Civic GX which was powered by natural gas. The seventh generation of Civic came out in 2001 and this was the first Civic to use the newly introduced K-series engine which we love even still today. This was also the first generation of Civic to adopt the hybrid powertrain. And finally the eighth generation of Civic came out in 2006. It was offered either as a sedan like this or as a coupe. For the 8th generation, the Civic Hybrid still remained, but it was only available as the sedan. The Civic SI was available as a sedan and also a coupe, but in America, we did not get the hatchback. Honda also used the 8th gen platform in Canada, which was used as the Acura CSX, which you could call the predecessor to the Acura ILX. This Civic in particular belongs to my friend Michael. It's a 2009 Civic EX in polished metal metallic. Over the LX, the EX added a power sunroof, a better audio system, rear disc brakes, and most importantly, these 16-inch alloy wheels above the 16-inch steel wheels on the LX. This one also has a few personal touches like the accessory fog lights and a rear deck lid spoiler, which class up the Civic. So for the 8th gen, the Civic LX and EX came with the same engine and transmission, unlike previous generations where the EX would get a bigger engine. So under the hood of most 8th gens, besides the SIs, will be this 1.8 liter single overhead cam 4 cylinder. It makes 140 horsepower and 128 pound-feet of torque. This one is paired to a 5-speed automatic, but a manual transmission was available. In terms of fuel economy, it's stellar. We actually took this from Maryland to Illinois and back and got 37 mpg on the highway. I also wanted to mention the silhouette of this car. If you look at a 7th gen Civic, it's just boxy and bland and just normal looking. But this, it's like aerodynamic and just interestingly shaped in the front and in the back. So there's two ways you could get into the trunk of your 8th gen Civic, either with pulling the latch on the inside or with the key fob. Thank you. So in the trunk of the Civic, you have 12 cubic feet of volume. There is a sub in the trunk of this one, but you could still fit two large suitcases and a bunch of Hot Wheels. Underneath the floor, you have a donut spare tire with a little toolkit and stuff. That's something that I miss about new cars. All they give you is just a can of fix a flat. Also, the rear seat is a 60 40 split. So, getting into the back seat of the eighth gen. So, legroom is not too bad. This is a compact sized car. Let me close the door. Interior quality in the back seat, it is. Honestly, not that bad. It's better than some other cars that you'll see in this segment. This rear seat is almost all the way back and I'm 5'9 and I can fit my feet under the seat and I have a little bit of legroom. There's a map pocket only on the passenger side. In terms of headroom, 
it's not too bad. I mean, of course, this is a compact car that was made, you know, a decade ago. But still, in terms of interior room in the back, I'm actually pretty comfortable. These 8th gens are pretty spacious. In between the two front seats, you do not get air vents. I don't think the Civic got air vents up until the 10th gen. And you also have a center armrest here, which has surprisingly big cup holders, but they're not deep. But the armrest is nice and soft. In the front seat of the 8th gen Civic. Now, the first thing I wanted to mention is how comfortable these cars are. We took this from Illinois to Maryland and Maryland to Illinois. And these, this car, I mean, I feel like if you were in a Corolla or something else in this segment, it would be pretty uncomfortable. But the seats, it isn't an SI, but they are supportive. In this one, they're manual, but you have height adjustment and, you know, you can recline them as well. But they're really comfortable. And you just fit, it's like you're in a cockpit in here. And in terms of the steering wheel, it's nice. It's a three-spoke steering wheel. You have audio controls on the left and then cruise controls on the right. The headlights are not automatic and the wipers are not either, but, you know, that's segment standard. In terms of interior quality, in front, it's kind of better than the rear. I mean, everything that you'd normally touch feels good, like the armrest here, the armrest here. But even on the door panels, everything feels solid. There's no creaky, cracky plastic, you know, like you'd find in a cobalt of this era, the dash. I mean, like, it is plastic, but it's a nice feeling plastic. But, you know, who's touching the dash anyway? The gauges of the 8th Gen Civic are something that are unique to this one, I think. I Well, the ninth, the ninth gens had this similar setup too. So on the bottom, you have your tachometer and basic information. And on the top, you have your speedometer and some more information on top too. I actually like it because it's kind of like having a heads up display. You're not looking down too far. You know, it's nice to just see the speed up there and it's a digital speedometer. Looking at the door panel, the driver's side window is automatic up and down, but the others are just regularly you know, electric. This one has an aftermarket head unit, but this one did have the optional Navi in it, which I mean, now it is obsolete, but it is nice to have and it still works. I mean, I've reviewed a few other cars with the OEM Navi and it's still responsive even in 2022. This one also has single zone climate control. I don't think you could get dual zone on an eighth gen Civic, but that's okay. Very nice and easy to use. I mean, there's just no BS. There's no screens. There's no nothing. It's so nice. Underneath, you have a 12 volt power outlet, some storage where you could put your phone and an aux jack. And there's more storage. There's a lot of storage in this car. Now, speaking of storing things, there's two big cup holders here, which is something that I appreciate. There's no cup holders in the doors, but that's OK. But you do have nice pockets where you could put maps and things, you know, back in 2008. In front of the cup holders is the shifter for the five-speed automatic. It's actually interesting. This reminds me of the space ball in the Volvo S60R. It's in a nice, cool shape. Just the interior of this is very radical, especially considering the seventh gen, which was very conservative and more bland. On top, like I said, the EX gets this standard sunroof. Honda sunroofs of this era were kind of small, but it is nice you have a sunroof. Okay, so behind the wheel of the 8th Gen Civic, I've had a lot of driving time with this one. And the first thing that I noticed when I first started driving this, now I'm used to it, is how far the front wheels feel from you, you know, because the dash goes so far. But we're going to see how the power is. So like I said, 140 horsepower. He tries. It's not bad. I mean, but like this car, if you think about it, it's more of a daily driver. It's not an SI. If you want fast acceleration, you get the SI. But I also wanted to go back to how far I feel from the front end of the car because it's not that big of a car. It feels like, and this isn't an insult, it feels like I'm in a Beetle because the VW Beetle, the dash is very far from, well, the windshield is very far from you too. I mean, it handles, this handles great, you know, like it holds the road great, but it just feels like I'm far away, which honestly isn't a bad thing because it makes the interior of this feel bigger than it really is. So I would be talking about how twisty the road is and how this car handles at high rates of speed around corners, but we're currently doing 17. He's going quickly kick down 
Yeah. It's, I mean, so like, this car isn't fast, but just the way how the engine sounds, it's, I mean, Hondas are just invigorating, even if it is, uh, you know, not as an insult, but a plebeian way, but handling, ooh. I was always so impressed with how the handling of this is. Now I'm behind a Kia Nero that's going slow, but these do have that variable steering. So when you're in a parking lot, it's nice and light, makes it easy for going around in parking lots. But when you go up to speed, it really firms up. Ooh, a Polestar 2. What is that? Do you see the yellow? Yeah. Oh. I like that. Is that a, ooh, oh, wheels. wheels. Wow. wow. So this on this rough road, the car actually handles the bumps really well. Uh, it feels premium. I mean, of course, it's not a luxury car, but for what it is, this car has 107,000 miles on it, and it takes bumps just like how I'd expect a new Civic to. Honestly, kind of better than the new Civic. Let's see. So since we're going to pull up on this, a little bit of wheel spin. Take the corner but turn in is real nice we're gonna get into some twisties soon thankfully now that you know i'm not behind anyone but now this corner here let's see the steering is so sharp like once you get up to speed it really tightens up and i'm nowhere near the limits of this car there is an idiot again on the bike it's so tight that's what he said but it's so like just it's so direct now this is the first time I'm really, you know, working the car out, but there's a tight corner coming up right here that I like taking with my Lexus. Ah, I mean, like I'm nowhere near the limit of this car, but just the way how it takes corners is very composed for being not even an SI, it's really good. I mean, Hondas love being pushed to the limit. That's something with Hondas. Since I had my seventh gen Accord, that car driving the, you know, these speeds, it just begs for more. And this car feels like it's just begging, begging you to, you know, try to get the wheels to chirp around the corner, which I mean, could be smart, but you know, depends. This is a nice little sweeping corner here. Let's see but nowhere near the limit. The car just takes the turn so nicely. It's so pleasant. There's another one coming. You don't even have to take the brake. Jag, but ah, oh, body roll is very minimal too. And I'm actually surprised for being a normal Civic. I'd expect a little bit more, but that's good that there's not a lot of body roll. Let's see this corner so direct and just there's so much road feel but in a good way just so planted there's no drama on turns but if you have the mindset of driving this like you know uh, as most people would drive this you know like in a daily fashion it's really comfortable there's not a lot of road noise i mean it's kind of on par with honda but it's not intrusive in any way the sound system on this is good especially this one but you could romp on this car and still get good mileage but you know if you tried i feel like in town you'd get 30 let's see oh that wasn't much of a corner let's see downhill Whee! <laughs> it's nice but even on like floaty bumps it just doesn't float i trust this car yeah more than it. that's that's my big thing that's a honda thing you trust them yep, you could I just trust him dog this shit out of them and they're still happy and yeah he'd still be smiling when i parked him yeah it has to be like he, sometimes he may be like whoa that was a workout <laughs> mm -hmm. what but is that like, that was fun there's an azera behind me <laughs> a black one a black azera black azera driver black azera Black Azera drivers, yeah, yeah, Black Azera drivers, drivers. of Black Hyundai Azera. Yeah, Black Hyundai Azera drivers. Okay, so the eighth gen Civic. Honestly, if you're looking for something that's practical, good on gas, fun to drive, and good for the wallet in terms of pricing, just buying one and filling one up, 
I think the 8th gen is the best Civic. I mean, and everyone talks about the 9th, 10th, 11th gen Civic, and even the 7th gen and all the older ones, but no one respects these cars. But on that note, it's time to end this video. So thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and of course, watching. If you have a car you'd like me to review, let me know in the email that's in the description below, and I'll get back to you. But on that note, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, peeps.